What's your best Indian neighbor story? My dad had a neighbor when he was young that played his radio loudly all day, even when he wasn't home or was gone on vacation. Every time he left the house and his radio was still on, my dad would go and trip the circuit breaker to his condo. One day he sees my dad, who was an electrical engineer, and asked him why his breaker kept tripping, was it faulty wiring? No, my dad explained, the loud radio was probably just putting too much strain on the circuit when left on all the time. My dad suggested he should try turning it down or off when he wasn't home, and see if that fixed it. So the man tried it, and surprise surprise, the circuit breaker stopped tripping. He was very thankful to my dad for helping him with that annoying electrical issue. When I was a kid we had this guy living next door who seemed like a nice guy. This is the mid-90s, and he had a neon business, so he was doing pretty well for himself. Then he got together with a crackhead, and his house slowly started going to shit. Literally. At one point his septic system went up and since they were smoking every dime he made he decided that he was just going to make a cesspit. We live on the east coast in the mid-Atlantic, it gets hot and humid come July. Thanks to this guy, our entire neighborhood smelled like a spot pot at Midsummer Festival for about three months. Fast forward to January, nice and snowy, we come home to our house being broken into. Computer is gone, TV is gone, bunch of movies and meds are gone. Cops show up and they start dusting and looking around. They go outside and lo and behold there are tracks going from our side door back to the neighbor's house. Of course, they deny everything and are at least smart enough not to keep the stuff around after we got home. They were not smart enough to use different names they pawn everything though. Needless to say, we had new neighbors within a few months of this incident. I live on a 50 plus acre New England farm. About two thirds of it is wooded. After I'd been here for about a year I was walking the boundary stone wall, about 10 on my side of the land. From a neighbor's yard I hear a bellowing voice. You better not be on my land. I replied I'm not. I'm on my own land. He yells back, from somewhere in the trees on his side, just so you know, never stop foot on my land. Me, okay, we've got a deal. And you stay off mine, okay? I hear a grunt. Then I ask by the way, is this your deer hunting tree stand on my side of the wall? At which point he exploded that Stan has been there for 10 years. TLDR, dumbass picks a fight for absolutely no reason and ends up agreeing to not trespass on my land, and I've been trespassing for a decade. I had a neighbor with a drag racing car. At the time, we didn't have AC. Like clockwork, at dinner time, he would start the car and revved it so loud my windows rattled. If we had any windows open, because it was summer, we wouldn't be able to have dinner conversation. One day, I'd had enough. I walked to the fence and got his attention and politely asked if he could maybe not rev the car at dinner time. I said I was cool with it otherwise. His answer was F you. F me? E okay. I went inside and called the police and filed a noise complaint. They came out, heard it live, and wrote him up. He fought it in court, so I had to go. Judge asked me what happened, I told the story above. She asked him and his wife if it was true, they said yes. Boom $1000 fine. Judge told me to call the police if it continued. To be clear, I wasn't wasting 911 time. I was calling the non-emergency, ordinance enforcement number. All dumbass had to do was avoid one hour a day, and we'd have been fine. I never called again, because he didn't ref during dinner. One day his common law wife gets in my face about calling again. I told her I didn't, but she wouldn't believe me. He got hit with a second $1,000 fine. Turns out it was the neighbor two houses away who was a migraine sufferer and had similarly tried the neighborly approach first. Edit, typos about window rattling and revving. We live next to this big guy in an apartment building, front doors inside a hallway. Now, he was a nice enough guy, but he was always cleaning a puddle up in front of his apartment every other day. We'd always ask him if everything was alright, and he'd talk some incoherent crap about how he hates management. So, out of curiosity, I asked management when I happened to be in the rental office, and the lady rolls her eyes and says, this idiot fills up his tub to the brim, and sits his fat ass in the tub. The water, of course floods his entire apartment, and comes out into the hallway, and this idiot has the balls to blame us somehow. I pretty much said, geez, sounds rough and scurried on back to my place. If the tub story is really the truth, this guy must be dumb as rocks. Reminds me of my upstairs neighbor. He takes baths constantly, and he ended up flooding out bathroom twice before the dumbest event. Water was off in the building because they were fixing the hot water heater. Dude goes to take a bath, no water, so he leaves for work. Without turning the faucet off. So halfway through the day, maintenance turns the water back on, his tub fills up, and I hear a waterfall in the bathroom. 
water literally raining through the ceiling. It got in the paint and made weird pockets too. Fortunately the maintenance guys were right outside cleaning up from their work, so they went upstairs and turned the tub off, but holy shit I'm glad I was home. Couple that lives across the hall from me fights often and loudly. One night, the girl found something on the guy's phone that she found objectionable, either porn or evidence of cheating, either way she was yelling a lot about skanks and sluts, so she throws his phone off the second floor balcony onto the concrete walkway below where it shatters. Guy then goes back inside grabs her phone and does the same. Moral of the story is, an iPhone for an iPhone makes the whole world entertaining for the neighbors. When I lived with my parents, we had a knock at the door one day from our neighbors across the road. They told us a story that resulted in their car getting stolen the night before. Apparently, the wife had seen a strange looking man wandering around the street late at night. He had apparently been looking into car windows which were parked on driveways, including our cars. The next morning, their BMW was gone. Including the keys which were hanging by the front door of their house. They assumed the strange man looking in car windows had somehow fished the keys from the house via the letterbox. The whole thing sounded very strange. To not call the police when a man is literally peering through car windows on people's driveways was strange enough. Months later, the neighbors got a divorce and sold their house. Turns out, they'd made the whole thing up and had dumped the car for the insurance, as they had fallen on hard times. Apparently, their shitty story hadn't held up well, and they were found out. Who broadcasts a story like that? Why make yourself look stupid for not calling the police when seeing a strange man eyeing up cars? Then tell all the neighbors about the man? A neighbor messed up when building a home and put his entire home well within my property, large piece of land with two huge clearings connected to two roads but separated by a large isthmus of trees. I didn't notice because I had taken an 8th month vacation right after he started building, huge property, I didn't go around and inspect it often. So I got a real estate lawyer and surveyors to confirm it was in my property. I was going to sell on that clearing for a good price until I went to talk to him and he was the biggest asshole I had ever met. He essentially told me that he is going to sue me for leading him on despite the fact that I did not know him nor have did I meet him before that day. His wife flipped my girlfriend and I as we were pulling out of their driveway. For months later, I file a lawsuit saying he must destroy the property or turn it over to me immediately. It would have cost him more to demolish it and return the site to original condition so he signed the house over to me. He was still out for construction costs. I was living in a single wide with my girlfriend, then I had brand new, 2,600 square foot house with all the hookups for water, electric, and cable for free. Got the land for next to nothing, sold it for almost 50 times the value. My constantly drunk neighbor came up with the brilliant idea that he could collect the leaves in the stone parking lot with his snowblower. He duct taped a plastic garbage bag over the discharge chute, and off he goes. It actually inflated the bag for a few moments until the stones started flying. He broke three windows on his garage door and splattered a bunch of cars in the lot. Shit my bridge is laughing. I could write a book on all the stupid s I saw him do. Neighbor before I bought the house every day would park but use a wide sweeping arc to get into a spot. Over my lawn. After asking many times for him to stop I put an enormous rock directly in that path on my own property. Lo and behold he smashed into it hard. After threatening to sue very loudly and forcefully, I informed him I'm a lawyer and he damaged me rock on my property and is liable for all the damages to my brand new rock, he stopped driving on my lawn after. Back in high school, one of our neighbors moved away and their house sold to this older woman and her mostly grown sons. She was a strange one, she cut down every tree on her property because of the bad spirits in them. The sons seemed to be popular, having people drop by at all hours. All was relatively quiet until one day, while I was home alone, there was a knock on the door. Two gentlemen in very nice black suits and dark ties then identified themselves as FBI and asked me if we were ever approached by crazy lady or her sons to buy anything. I basically replied with they are crazy and we don't talk to them, they don't talk to us, they hand me their business card then proceed on to the next house. I look out the window and I see, five, blue Ford Tauruses, three, red Ford Astro vans, and one Viacom truck that was being loaded with box after box from the neighbor's garage. Turns out the sons were making those special cable boxes that got you all of the channels for free. After this it was only the strange lady left in that house. My neighbor is an overweight middle-aged woman that seems to have a bad knee only when my kids are outside in the summer. If they are playing in my fenced-in backyard, she'll pretend to fall down so they can help her up. I went from kids, you should help her, that's what neighbors do, to she fell again? It seems like she only falls when you guys are playing. She doesn't fall when I'm working in the garden, to if she falls again, come get me. When I started saying that, she seemed to be able to get up pretty quickly. 
I had to go over there in August and tell her that I can't have my kids helping her get up anymore. They are seven and eight years old and they can't give her medical aid. I get that she is probably lonely, but three or four times a week, I'd hear her yell kids, kids, help me up. I fell again. I posted this one recently, so sorry it's a repeat. I'll make it short. I had a prob with a neighbor who drove over my lawn with his ATVs and damaged the grass slash shrubs. He said he'd pay for damage, but that never happened and he kept doing it. So I put my huge trailer across their tracks to block their path. They went around it. I put up two other barriers that they also drove around. So I found this huge branch that had fallen in the woods between our properties and dragged it across to cover the third path they were making across my yard. But the branch got caught on a cable. What is a cable doing over the lawn instead of properly buried? So I called the cable company to have it buried. They said I was the only registered client on that box and to disconnect it. So I did. After the weekend, my neighbor came by going total apes hit at me for disconnecting his cable. He yelled he was going to call the cops on me. So I left. I got a call from the cops. Cops asked if I disconnected cable because of the ATV issue. Interesting, I wasn't even going to mention the ATV issue, but my neighbor already did. So long story short, the neighbor got a warning ticket for trespassing and admitted to stealing cable. I took an offer on my house that very day and moved. I have crazy neighbors. They are actually very nice as neighbors go, but the family is totally dysfunctional. They have two grown-up daughters living there, along with their teenage daughters and their boyfriends. One has a kid. There are roughly 10 people living there ranging from 5 to 70. They keep the yard mode and keep to themselves mostly, but they are badass insane. I like them actually for two reasons. First, they are notorious and crazy around our town so everyone leaves them alone, so little crime around us. Second, they are entertainment. One morning my aunt was visiting. We are on the front porch and I am telling her about all the neighbors. I was telling her a story about how one of the younger granddaughters gets in a fight with her boyfriend at 2 a.m. on a Tuesday night. They are screaming at each other, walking up and down the street, explaining that something like that happens once a week. Like clockwork, one of the daughters comes out screaming back at someone and gets in her car. Her daughter comes out and tries to stop her from backing out. She grabs a shovel from the back of the truck and starts hitting the front windshield of the car, stattering it. They call the cops. Meanwhile the granddaughter with the shovel calls her bio dad who lives down the road. He picks his daughter up. Two minutes later the cops show up, but she is gone. I have hundreds like this. I had a neighbor on our old street who were pretty sure was on some serious drugs. When we first moved there, he wanted to invite us to a barbecue, but we declined because we were still busy unpacking and said, maybe another time. A few months later, we hear a woman in distress, and it turns out he was beating his wife in the middle of the street, we called for her to come over so she could call the police or whatever. The wife left him, and there was some drama between both of them throughout the years, it's irrelevant to us, though. Because our family helped his wife, we were his enemy, and he harassed us multiple times throughout the years. We'd call the police, and they'd come out and basically have him stop for a time. At one point, he bought a megaphone and started yelling threats and swears at us. Another time, he started driving his motorcycle around our neighborhood to annoy us and then used the motorcycle's back tire to throw dirt and rocks at our car. We called the police, who told him, don't do this again, he denied he ever did it in the same breath that he said he did because my mom is evil. A few years later, I go to get the mail and I hear him talking to his, one to two year old, child. He was basically telling the child, the woman over there is evil. Never trust her, referring to my mom. I tell my mom, and she's thinking, oh boy, what's he up to now? Later that afternoon, he drives by our house very slowly and stops, staring into our living room window. He later goes home and uses his megaphone to insult my mom and yell threats at us again, one specific threat being, you better not leave your kids alone, or something will happen to them. My mom calls the police, and they recommend a restraining order. The next day, his ex-wife calls us, saying our kids heard him saying he was going to get a restraining order against us. We filed one at the same time, so we had the same court date. He told the court that my mom had been training me and my siblings, and an unnamed teenage boy, to climb his fence and go into his tree at night to harass him, and one night he caught us, and we all ran back into our house at my mom's orders. Apparently, we only harassed him when his kids were at his ex-wife's. He basically spotted insanity throughout the entire court hearing. The judge asked for our side of the story, and we told him. He judge asked if our neighbor was taking any meds, and he told the judge, yes, I was taking antipsychotics, but I stopped them. The judge then told him that my family would never bother him again and granted us our restraining order. Dude was completely insane. 
I worry about how those kids of his turned out. I was off sick one day, and my roommate came home for lunch and checked the mail. We got a letter with no return address, sent to the rooftop pot smokers, with our address on it. We knew it was for our next door neighbors since one of them had a chair on the roof and smoked up there. Since it had no actual name and our address on it, I was like, hell yeah, I'ma open this, it'll be hilarious. As I'm opening the taped envelope, a little bit of white powder sprinkled onto my lap. My roommate and I looked at each other and were like, uh, WTF, so I got up and took the letter outside to open it. A crap ton of light powder came out of the letter when we took it out of the envelope, so we grabbed a Ziploc bag and some tongs and sealed up the letter. The letter was typed and said random stuff like, to the asshole who likes smoking pot on the roof and yelling at people on the street with kids, you'd better have good insurance cause I'll damage your stuff. I'm ex-military and have nothing better to do than to watch over you. You pissed off the wrong guy, blah blah blah, and at the end, it said, by the way, the substance in this envelope is toxic, so you might want to get yourself to a hospital. Who's the mother f now? At that point, we were half laughing, half concerned, so I called the cops just in case. They took it very seriously and sent out everyone, cops, paramedics, fire trucks, RCMP, my roommate works for them, and the tactical unit, our version of SWAT. The street was closed off, we were quarantined to our garage, and every neighbor who was home at the time came out to take a look. Everyone was told to go back inside and stay put. The tactical team got suited up in hazmat suits and went in our house to test the letter slash envelope. We were in the garage for almost three hours. The tactical guys came back out and said the substance was found to be non-toxic, but they still had to do some more tests to figure out exactly what it was. At that point, we were taken into the ambulance for a look over and then back to the garage. Turns out the white powder was pancake mix. My roommate and I, along with the cops and tactical guys, burst out laughing together. We thanked the response teams, and they left. The police stayed behind to get our statements and questioned the next door neighbors to whom the letter was supposed to be sent. A detective followed up with us a couple of times, since it was a threat and sent through the mail, it was a serious offense. The letter slash envelope was sent off to forensics for testing. Unfortunately, nothing was found, and the case was closed. The people in that house caused some issues the entire time they lived there, noise complaints, trash left everywhere outside, etc., but this incident really takes the cake. Luckily, they have all since moved out. Dick bags. TLDR, asshole neighbors piss off another neighbor, a threatening letter laced with powder gets sent to us by mistake. Neighbor after someone had attempted to steal his bike and being advised by me to get a better lock, proceeds to save his time by not locking his bike up at all, but balancing the lock so that it looked like his bike was locked up unless you actually looked at it for a few seconds. I warned him that someone had already tried to steal his bike and that it wasn't really clever leaving it unlocked like that he says I promise you I'll lock it up, why he's promising me anything I have no idea I was just being neighborly, he then leaves his bike unlocked like that for about a week until someone stole it. I guess it did save the thief time. Edit, he did exactly the same thing again. About two months after his first bike was stolen he left another bike out unlocked for weeks and it was stolen. Edit, no one is going to read this but fuck me he did it a third time. We have a grandma next door who is raising her three grandchildren. They are complete teenage idiots. They got in trouble for stealing from our neighbors. The kids would offer to cut their grass and ask to use their bathroom when they were done. Then they would steal medication from the bathroom. It was extremely obvious who stole medication. They pulled this scam up and down the block. Wasn't too hard to put it together. Edit to add, two of the grandkids are in juvie. They stole a crazy expensive car from a very wealthy neighborhood nearby and they crashed the car. In college, I lived in a big apartment building. I lived in a two bedroom and only had neighbors on one side. They also share a wall with Oli S. One day we just start hear this constant loud banging on the walls. This went on and off for days and was extremely loud and annoying. Finally, we figured out what it was via the one guy Snapchat story. These guys had installed a full size basketball hoop on the wall we shared with them and were constantly shooting hoops. This was especially annoying because the wall directly across from where the hoop was, was not shared with anyone. So we talked to them about it and asked if they could move it. The next day we hear loud drilling in the wall and assumed they are taking it down. Nope. They either installed the second hoop or made the first one more secure in the wall. I own about 8 acres. The house next to me has a right of way drive that goes through it. A couple bought the house about 10 years ago. One day they were down near the mailboxes planting some plants. I went down and very nicely told them that what they had done was fine, but in the future, before they do anything on my property, they need to ask me first. He argued with me that they had rights to all of the property on 35 foot of each side of the right of way. I explained to him that this just wasn't true. 
They haven't spoken to me since and won't even return my wave when I wave at them. If they want to be mad at someone it is the agent who sold them the house, not me. My neighbor of the last house I lived in had about one third of his property inside our backyard because the previous tenants didn't measure correctly when they installed the fence. Two to three times a week my neighbor raked leaves. He start in his backyard and then drag a giant trash can to his one third of the property of my yard and rake for hours. Then he'd go to the front and rake that area and walk the trash can back through our backyard and into the woods where he'd dump the leaves and yard clippings. This neighbor was so obsessed that his one third of the yard didn't have grass growing from how often he raked and walked through it. And in the summer he'd mow this dirt patch, sometimes after the sun had gone down and it was completely dark. What about you? Tell us your story in comment section and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Right now.